All right, we'd like to welcome tournament host Tiger Woods and uh, Charlie Sifford Memorial Exemption um, recipient for 2022, Aaron Beverly, to the interview room here at the Genesis Invitational. Thanks for joining us, gentlemen. Um, Tiger, I'll start with you. Um, mm -hmm. We're on the eve of the first round, the opening round. How do you feel like the week is shaping up so far from your perspective? Well, it, uh, I'm glad it's not going to hail the rest of the week. So <laughs> I'm excited about that. Um, so a couple of guys like Cooch get, got caught out there, which is pretty funny of all people. Uh, the golf course is in perfect shape. Uh, corporate superintendent has done a fantastic job in getting this thing just right. I and mean, we've had unbelievable weather, as you know, some of you guys were here for Super Bowl um, weekend. It, it's been in the 80s and 90s. Um, perfect growing conditions. The golf course is in perfect shape. Uh, you know, the temperatures will obviously be very cold in the morning. Ball's not going to be going very far, but as it warms up a little bit, um, the, the fairways are, are going to be giving it up, so the guys will be getting the ball out there. If you're able to hit the ball in the fairway, you're going to have a tremendous advantage coming into the greens. So look for, look for the guys that who are driving it well. They're going to be at the top of the board. Uh, they'll have a lot shorter irons into the greens where you you know they're they're firm right now. And you know the plan is uh, well, I can now tell you guys the plan because I'm not playing. Uh, the plan is to get them a little bit firmer and faster, and each day progressively get a little bit harder and a little bit more difficult. So uh, it's going to be fun to watch. Tiger, this year um, marks the the year that Charlie Sifford would have turned 100. Mm -hmm. um, the tournament's always had a long-standing history of uh, supporting diversity in the game, and this week they're honouring Charlie with significant initiatives such as the special exemption, of course, and uh, the 100 designation on the first hole. Um, why are these in initiatives important to you? Well, Charlie was was a person. He was he was a pioneer. I mean, he was the person that um, he broke down the Caucasian clause that was part of the part of the tour. Uh, he, I, I think that he should have been the first person ever playing the Masters, but unfortunately, that didn't happen after his win here in the Los Angeles area or at Rancho Park. Uh, Charlie was. The, the grandfather I never had. You know, he was, he was he, to me, he was Grandpa Charlie. And I see him at Firestone every year, and um, I was telling Aaron over here that I would get these, you know, yellow teletexts, you know, in my locker every time I had a chance to win a tournament. And uh, it, I'll summarize it by saying go out and win. It, it wasn't, <laughs> you guys know Charlie, it wasn't exactly in those words, but that was a summary of it. <laughs> Uh, but but you know, Grandpa Charlie was fantastic, and it was it was great to have uh, President Obama award him the um, uh, the Medal of Freedom uh, before he passed. And uh, you know, I I named my son after Charlie. He meant that much to my, me and, and my family. My dad would never have <clears throat> would never have been able to play the game of golf. He would never have taken it up if uh, Charlie hadn't had broken out like down the Caucasian clause. So. It, it's very important for us to honor what he has he has done, has meant um, to this great game of golf. Uh, to have Aaron here be a, be a part of it, um, you know, he'll talk here in a little bit. And you know, what what he is, what he's doing, what he's going through, um, for him to be part of here at Riviera. Um, I remember <laughs> I just asked him, "What are you doing the first hole?" He's on the pipe of touring right down there and you know, on the green. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's what I used to think, too. Um, uh, I, I remember when I hit my first tee shot there, I hit my little, my little three-wood out there. You know, I, I looked like the size of a three-wood. Uh, but it was, it was neat to, to be a part of that first tee shot. I mean, you look back at that tee shot, okay? Every great champion that's basically uh, from the 40s on has, has, has hit that tee shot. You know, you, See photos of Hogan and Nelson, and and you know everyone after that, subsequent after that, all hit that tee shot. And you can't lengthen that tee shot; it's not going anywhere. The clubhouse is the same spot, the same road, the same car path, same everything. Um, it's an sorry, an iconic tee shot, and it's one that uh, uh, Aaron will always remember. And then us having the flag um, have a hundred on it uh, means that much more because we're uh, what Charlie has meant to this event. Um, to me and to the, the great game of golf. And uh, i just ask a couple more questions before we take some questions. Um, Aaron, um, 
You're sitting here next to Tiger Woods today, and tomorrow you make your PGA Tour debut here at the event. Um, what does it mean to you to receive the Charlie Sifford Memorial exemption to this event? Yeah, it's a real privilege and honor. Um, obviously, like Mr. Woods said, everything that Charlie meant to the game of golf, uh, to me, he embodied three things, desire, uh, perseverance, and um, just a passion for the game of golf. You know, he had a desire to always play on tour. Uh, he had a passion for the game of golf and persevered through a lot of, uh, you know, adversity. So try to embody that spirit um, is a real honor to me. And, you know, to be sitting here next to Mr. Woods and to be uh, honest with everybody is really cool. I had dreams of one day playing against him and competing against him. And hopefully, you know, 72nd hole, I'm making the putt and I'm fist pumping. So my dreams never got so far to be sitting, you know, doing a press conference with him. But... It's definitely a moment in time I'll never forget and very special. Let's work on that 72nd hole <laughs> issue here. Playoff, man. Playoff. Yeah. All right, let's work on that part. <laughs> Aaron, I just want to take you back to Monday. Uh, Ethan Mangum uh, was the inaugural pathway player into the collegiate showcase on Monday. Um, how was your experience playing alongside Ethan? And uh, can you see yourself continuing down that path one day? Yeah, playing with Ethan was amazing. He, uh, we started on 10. He rattled off three birdies in a row. I was like, oh, man, we might have a course record on our hands. Um, he was just a great young man. He's got a great spirit about him, very confident, uh, plays the game golf the way it's supposed to be played. And, you know, when you look at a guy like that, you just know that golf's in good hands moving forward. So it's awesome to have him out here, and it was, you know, really a pleasure of mine to be playing alongside him on Monday. Tiger, you've already kind of reminisced about hitting that opening tee shot um, back in 93, I think it was. Two. 92. Um, what do you remember from that day, and what sort of advice maybe you could give to Aaron tomorrow? Yeah, he's well, the first well shot? okay, well, first of all, don't do what I did. Um, I had, you know, we all have our credentials. You know, you guys hang your lanyards around your neck, right? So I had my credential, um, if you look at it, in my left front pocket. And I remember on the range and a couple putting, a couple putts I hit, I actually hit it. I'm like, maybe I should move this. But yeah, but they won't let me in the tournament. <laughs> so um, I didn't move it. So if you look out there in my left front pocket, I got um, my little credential there. And don't put it there. It's a bad spot. Okay. Keep it like uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it, it, looking back on it, it was, uh, <clears throat> I was trying to explain this earlier um, to a few people that, it was, it was, you know, I was in high school. I mean, I was a what, sophomore in high school. So it was like going from playing JV baseball to all of a sudden facing, okay, you're going to, you're going to be in a bump against Nolan Ryan. Like that's how the, the, that's how big a jump that felt like. And, and um, I thought I played well. I shot 72, 75, and I felt like I could have improved maybe about what, four shots better. And I was still 17 back at Davis. And, it was quite humbling, um, but I have to say, okay, this is one of the, the, you have to understand where I grew up. I grew up playing public golf courses, so I played down there at Hartwell Jutra Golf Park. Uh, it's our Hartwell Golf Park down there in the 18-hole par three course, and you know, if you guys remember the, the pyramid of clubs, you know, three clubs on each side, so you carry that around, you have a six-pack of beer, and that's, you know, that's how they play golf, right? Well, to play in a tour event to have to not use a range token <laughs> and to have brand new at that time brand new balada balls on the range um i wanted to fill up my bag and just like steal the whole thing and you know <laughs> um but that's you know that's the the difference between going from where i where i was playing at at the time to come out here and playing on tour and it was a enormous chasm and you know, I was lucky enough to have gotten an exemption to play here. Mr. Nelson gave me an exemption to play at his tournament in Dallas. Um, so when I eventually, when I ended up getting a, a few more exemptions, I won a few events, allowed me to play in, in a few more tournaments. Um, that chasm didn't seem as big and it didn't seem as as um, as you know awe awe inspiring, awe, awe you know as an awe moment. Um, I felt like, hey, you know, I've been here, I've seen this, I know what these guys are capable of. Now, can I do this? No, it wasn't, it wasn't as, as big a shock factor. So having that exemption at, at that age was, yes, it was a big jump, eye-opening, but it allowed 
allowed me to understand how far I had to go, how much I had to work. I had to go dig it out of the dirt. Um, Charlie and I, I mean, Charlie and I used to talk about that all the time. You got to go earn in the dirt. And um, perseverance, as uh, Aaron was alluding to, that's what embodied uh, Charlie, and that's what allowed me to get here. I persevered. I worked my, my butt off. I went out there and earned it in the dirt, uh, which allowed me to yeah, get on tour. Aaron, just finally from me, you have the honor of hitting the opening tee shot tomorrow uh, in the first round. Um, how meaningful is that, and uh, what do you anticipate, uh, you know, finally getting the tournament underway? First of all, I'm just glad I'm like used to getting up early in the morning and playing golf at like 6.30, so 6.40 tee time would be you know, right at home for me. Um, it's definitely special, you know, playing in your first PJ Tour event is a tremendous honor and obviously being able to hit the first tee shot, I'm just going to make sure I can put fairway check mm -hmm. in, you know, in my book and give somebody, I mean, everybody else something to strive for. Perfect. Okay, we'll take a few questions. If you have one, just raise your hand and we'll get a microphone to you. We'll start with Dan right over here. That for Tiger. <laughs> What has your golf activity looked like since the PNC, and have you thought about a tournament or a date that might be fit for a return to competition? You know, D, I, I wish I could tell you when I'm playing again. I, I want to know, uh, but I don't. Um, my golf activity has been very limited. Uh, I can I can chip and putt really well and hit short irons very well, but I haven't done any, any long stuff seriously. So uh, I'm still working, like, at the PNC, I'm still working on the walking part. Um, my foot was a little messed up there about a year ago, so um, the walking part is is something that I'm still working on, um, working on strength and development in that. Um, it's, it takes time. It's, the, what's frustrating is not at my timetable. Um, I, I want to be at a certain place, but I'm not. And I just got to continue working. I'm getting better, yes, but as I said, not not at the speed and rate that I would like, and yet in the age factor too. And you, know, you just don't quite heal as fast, and which is frustrating. Let's go to Jeff in the middle, and then Rex. Uh, Tiger, two questions uh, down here in front. Um, yeah. Have you seen progress since the PNC? You yeah, I like have. Yeah, no, I ha I have seen progress. Um, I'm a lot stronger than I was then. I'm able to hit more shots, but as I was alluding to you at, at PNC, it's, I was in a cart, okay? I mean, I, I can play weekend warrior golf. That's, that's easy. Um, but to be able to be out here and play, call it six rounds of golf, because you play practice round, pro-am, four competitive days, um, it's the cumulative effect of all that. Uh, I'm not able to do that yet, and I'm still working on, on getting to that, to that point. And then just on your comments there about um, Aaron and, and kind of how you how you found things. We have a lot of good players right now in Southern California. Max Homo was just here. Um, and a lot of them have come up from public golf. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that that's something that, that hardened you, gave you a little bit of a difference from, from other players? And is it something you think about with your Charlie because he's not out there at Hartwell's of the world. Is that something you're, you're aware of and kind of trying to um, keep abs him abs humble? Absolutely I'm aware of it because, um, I, you know, growing up on where I grew up playing either at, at a military golf course uh, or a public par three course, you know, the... The Southern California Junior Golf Association did an incredible job and does and still does an incredible job of hosting great events, one-day events, and sometimes two, depends on what term it was. Sometimes the Lee Hamill at Los Coyotes was, was a two-day event. Your Belinda was a two-day event. Um, things of that nature were, or even Griffith Park uh, was a two-day event. And we had um, a Long Beach match play over, over at El Dorado was a you know, few-day event. But mostly it's one-day events. So, yes, a lot of those one-day events typically... Um, or in public courses, but I'm telling you what, as a kid from a public course, and if you got to see the, the name of the golf course and you saw a CC at the end of it, it was going to be a cool experience, okay? And so, I mean, not too many people can really understand that because a lot of the, the, the players that have made it on tour didn't, didn't really understand that. Um, they didn't come from that kind of background. Um, that is the challenge you know, that me as a parent face, um, other parents face, that if you know, I, I belong to a country club, 
and so that's that's the challenge. And I always try to tell any of the kids, hey, when conditions are tough, conditions are bad, hey, they're bad for everyone. This is how it is. We used to put on fairways, all right? So um, that's, make the most of it. Don't get upset about it. Fight through it, you know, and, and deal with it. And, and handle it and just and keep coming back and keep and learn. What did you learn from it? Well, well, I learned that if I didn't have enough hit in the right hand, I can't get the ball to the hole. Well, that's because you're not putting on bent grass greens. Um, there, there are so many things you can learn from this. Okay, so taking a negative and turning it into a positive or for me, it was growing up and, and seeing the shock value of, of having a name with a CC at the end of it. Um, this is what's this was out there if I'm able to play well if I'm able to do really well I can play more of these type of golf courses and so I got lucky enough when I was in high school uh, Big Canyon was was fantastic they gave me a, a junior membership there so I was able to drive down the Newport and uh, be able to play there at, at Big Canyon and um, my junior and senior years our high school golf team didn't play HG Dad Miller um, we played Los Coyotes, and I think they had a, a LPG tour right there. So um, it's exciting the, that what, what, you, what you can learn, but you got you got to make the most of it and make the most of each and every opportunity. And that's why I try and tell not just you know my son is involved in the game, but all, all kids are involved in the game. Make sure you take them take and learn from every every single opportunity that, that's out there. Tiger, yeah. Since the PNC, have you been able to increase your golf activities, whether if that's on the range or on the golf course? And if so, is is that a sense of motivation for you? Uh, short game wise, yes, I can. Long game wise, no. No, I have not. And because that that involves more loading, more torquing of the leg, and as I said, walking is so something I'm still working on. Um, I can walk on a treadmill all day. It's easy. It's just straight, and there's no. There's no bumps in the road, but walking on the golf course with his undulations, um, I have a long way to go. Um, my leg was not in a very good position there about a year ago, and I've had to work through a lot of different operations and a lot of different scenarios, and it's been tough. Uh, but I've gotten here, I've gotten this far, and I still have a long way to go. And each, each and every day is a fight, and I welcome that fight. I get up in the morning and, you know, let's go a few more rounds. Hey, Tiger, right here. Um, did the PNC, the way you played, I mean, obviously the actual golf was, was pretty good. Um, did, th did that give you any sense that a comeback might be sooner than you would have thought? And have you even allowed yourself to give yourself a goal, a tournament no. goal? Oh, okay, well, first part of your question is I, I knew that I could play, okay? I can still play. Um, but I'm in a cart. Beacon, being a weekend warrior is easy. You know, that's not that hard. You know, hit your ball, hop on a cart, ride, barely step out of a cart, grab your club, hit the next one, right? And the longest walk you have is probably from, what, the cart to the green and back? Um, I can do that. That's not that hard. But walk on a, a golf course, that's a totally different deal. And then walking out here for days on end, um, long days, forget when my back was bad, when we had rain delays and had to reactivate everything and go back out there again. You know, I still got that issue too. So, you know, that's just, <laughs> um, I got a long way to go. And so, did it give me hope? Yes, it did. Because I went through a very difficult year last year. And it gave me hope to be able to play with my son again and to be able to have fun with him and have those moments they have, we had from a year, year prior to that. We built on that. Um, those are, I wouldn't trade those experiences in for anything. We, we had two of the greatest days ever together, just he and I. And then we had the Lacavas in there, um, Little Joe and Big Joe. Um, it was the best. And, um, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean that I'm going to be back out on tour playing anytime soon. Um, I was very limited in what I could do there. Um, but being out here on tour, you get exposed. And that's the beauty of the sport. You get exposed. There are um, there are no carts, and you have to you have to work your way around it. You have to be fit enough to be able to do this sport at a high level. Um, you have to be able to practice at a high level to be to expect to come out here and win. 
And I have not done any of that. I guess you, as you talk about uh, rehab and strengthening and all that, I'm, I'm, I'm guess I'm curious, how's the structure of your leg? Like, and how is it different from a year ago? Well, it's, is it it's altered. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's, uh, my right leg does not look like my left, put it that way. If that'll work. Okay. The other thing, uh, too, is without, without uh, being involved in, mm -hmm. in tournament golf, how do you feel... How do you fill your competitive void? And I, I got to think trying to beat Phil in the player impact program probably isn't it. <laughs> well, that's that's not my that's not my call on, on that. Um, my my void is spent uh, a lot of reading. Um, we've done a lot of emails on expansion of the foundation, um, board calls, one-on-one -on -one calls. Uh, we still run TGR live events, and so getting all those. Now, these are things that I wasn't allowed to spend as much time, and now I've got ample time to, to be more um, ardent about the whole process and delve deeper about what, we, what we're going to do, how we're going to do it, um, maybe even redefining our, our mission. And COVID has thrown a big monkey wrench into you know, what we do as, as a foundation, being as an after-school program. It's hard to find teachers. Teachers are unwilling, especially teachers who are older, are unwilling to spend more time at school just because of a, of a threat of getting COVID. So this is a very different world we live in and trying to find the best way around it. So I'm doing a lot of thinking in, in that, that regard. Um, as far as other, other parts of my, my life, I read a lot. Still play video games. That hasn't changed. Um, but I don't. I, I wish I would. Have, I wish I could spend more time on the range, digging out of the dirt, like I was saying earlier. Um, but that's not realistic at this point. The most fun I've had. Um, Meeting me. <laughs> talking about the fist pump on 70 second hole. We're going. We're going to work on that part. All right. All right. All right. You still right? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get there. Okay. You're going to get there too. All right. All right. <laughs> Do you think you will be able to walk yeah. at the par three tournament, and is that a short-term goal that you have? A par th I, I can walk at par three. I mean, the par at three the tournament. And well, I can walk that now. You can. But you're talking about. I'm talking about playing golf. That's a practice round. That's a pro am day, or if it's a major, I said it's a practice round day. It's four rounds. It's the competitive nature. How much that takes out of you mentally, physically, emotionally. I haven't prepared for any of that. Um, I'm going for a walk. Okay, I can do that. Am I, am I going to be sore? Hell yeah, but I can do that. In April, is that something you're thinking of doing? I can do that now. But it, it, whether I do that or not, um, I don't know. And what's your, what are some of the duties that you'll be doing this week for the tournament as the ambassador? What's that? So I'm sorry, the last part? At, at, in your role as the mm -hmm. ambassador for this tournament, what will be some of the duties that you'll be doing? Uh, we got a lot of meetings scheduled this week because I'm not playing. I got ample time to do a lot of one-on-one uh, -on -one meetings about the future of our foundation, um, where we're headed, future donors, um, trying to get uh, an understanding from not just our board but other other people who are influential in this area. How can we have a deeper impact in the area? Um, so I have <laughs> I've got a lot of meetings ahead of me this week. Uh, Normally, I don't have these these meetings because I'm out there playing against Aaron and the rest of the guys. Uh, but there's, this year's different. Tiger, outside of the golf, looking back a year ago, how fortunate do you feel just to be here fully intact, I guess? Very lucky. Uh, they were very lucky. And as a lot of you guys know, that you know, I didn't know if I was going to have the right leg or not. And so to be able to have my right leg still here, um, it's it's huge, and I still have a lot of issues with it, but it's mine, and I'm very thankful for that. Thankful for all the surgeons and the doctors and the nurses that, um, for all the the countless surgeries that we went through and the countless rehabs, um, and the PT sessions are, are are brutal, but it's it's still mine, and uh, very thankful for that. What have you been reading? I read a lot of Dean Kuhn's books. 
Um, he's based in California, so um, a lot of the places that I've, I've been to, uh, I've always been a big, big fan of his ever since high school. And then as you as you talk to someone or, or maybe mentor someone that's uh, going to call you Mr. Woods now instead of just Tiger, what is the advice that you give above all? <laughs> um, just just enjoy working, enjoy putting the time in. Um, if you want to get better, I mean, just like what we what we provide with our our foundation and our STEM programs. You know, school's tough. School's boring at times, but you find subjects you like. And it's amazing how much your attention span goes up, um, how much you're willing to put more effort into it. And it's the same for golf. Uh, finding that passion for practice, to prepare, um, to get yourself ready for an event, um, enjoying the process of it. It makes things so much better. Um, that would be the one thing that I would, you know, would. Hope it would encourage Aaron and others um, to just enjoy that practice of, of going out there and finding, as I would keep saying, dig it out of the dirt and going out there and earning it on your own. No one's going to give it to you. Uh, you got to go earn it. And that earning it is, that's part of the fun. That's part of the, the joy of going out there and hitting 500 to 1,000 balls a day and, and finding it out there because that's when you start to understand you own it. You own your game, not anyone else's game. You know what you can and cannot do. And that's what allows. That's what has allowed me to win, win tournaments. For Mr. Beverly, uh, I'm going to guess you were probably still in diapers when, when Tiger won his first Masters. So beyond that, what would, what would be your earliest, strongest um, memory of, of Tiger? I was wasn't it... quite in diapers, but I was definitely in overalls. Um, the first, me first memory <laughs> I have is the 97 Masters when he won. We were on, on oh, vacation, and I was three. I, the only reason I remember this is because my dad has told me this story a hundred times over. But we were on vacation in Monterey, and he had it on TV, and he watched, and it was one of the first times I ever saw my dad cry was because Tiger won. And then the last time I ever got to watch my dad was 2019 Masters when Mr. Woods won. So it's definitely, you know, uh, bittersweet that I can't share that memory with my dad, like me being here right now. Um, and, you know, he understands that probably better than almost anybody in the world. So... Yeah, so I wasn't in diapers, but definitely young, so, and a lot of, you know, countless memories. And then Tiger, had, had one more for you, just out of curiosity. Phil made some comments a couple of weeks ago about um, uh, media rights and, and mm -hmm. players not having access to it. You had one like 20 years ago that was more marketing, I think, than media rights. But what, what were your thoughts on, on those comments and, and the concept of, of players having more access to media rights? Yeah, that's that's something that we've had we've had struggles with that for decades, really. I mean, remember L Larry wanted to unionize our tour, and we went through that whole process. Um, you know that uh, what we, we, probably what we didn't understand at the time, you know, even when I first came out here over 25 years ago, is that is that where our tour would go, where our media would go. You know, we barely had cell phones, and so uh, barely had the internet. So, media rights is is a big thing. Um, a lot of us are concerned about you know what is was the direction where we're going and how can we have more control over that. Um, and there's been a lot of talk from whether it's the pack or the board or from players internally. Um, everyone has their opinion about it, but we need to come to a, a collective decision. Jay has taken it all in to try and figure out what's best for each and every individual player because we're all independent contractors, but also then again, what is best for the tour as a brand as well. And so trying to put all that together, meanwhile still grow the tour at the same time, and all the different media rights that have come about over the last 10 years, um, whether it's streaming, which is you know didn't, didn't exist, uh, where do you go on that? Uh, where does the tour go? Who owns who owns those, owns those rights? Um, how much do you share of that? Uh, does it? Where does it go? Um, but I have to say that the one of the things that allows you know our, our sport, what separates our sport so much, is one the fact that we are able to have the best retirement plan there is in all sports, and we have an opportunity to play well past our playing days um, and still 
earn well over a million dollars, well into our 50s, where football players have done it nine years. So, yes, there's there's a, there's a give and take, okay? And we just need to find where there's a balance of what's best for the players and what's best for the brand. Nope. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Just first of all, who's Larry? Larry Rinker. Oh, Larry Rinker. Okay. All right. I was going to ask you, most people asking the question about your health, and they all assume, I think, that at some point you're going to come back. A, is that a fair assessment? And B, if you did come back, do you think you could come back and be competitive? Um, will I come back? Yes. Um, will I will come back and play a full schedule? No. Um, I said then at Albany. Uh, that'll never happen again. Um, I can play certain events here and there, uh, but on a full-time level, no, that will never happen again. Um, pick and choose my events, whether they're majors or other events. I can I can do something like that. Um, but uh, come back and playing the tour, yes, but not on a full-time basis. And one other thing, because Doug mentioned it, do you distrust the tour? Because it's clear that some of the comments by other people are suggesting that the tour is doing something untoward and somehow are hoarding the money that they're not giving to you guys. Do I distrust the tour? And that is no. Um, I've had a great relationship with Tim over the years, and I've had a great relationship with Jay over the years. Um, Jay and I started back in 03 in Boston, and so we've built our relationship since then. Um, so we've, we've had a great relationship. And yes, are there disagreements? Of course, they're supposed to be. And we, we as players want what's best for us, and he wants, what, wants what's best for the players and the brand as well. And so uh, are there going to be disagreements? Yes. Are there going to be concessions? Yes. Um, but, you know, I think that constructive uh, disagreements are good. Um, it adds to both sides. And we, we want to see the game of golf grow, okay? There's opinions on how the game of golf is going to grow. And therein lies the difference. And so collectively, there are a lot of guys who believe a certain way, and then some guys believe, a, believe differently. But I just think that um, in the grand scheme of things, we want to see the game of golf grow. Um, we've, for me, personally, I've had a, a great relationship with the, with the tour. I've been a part of it for, what, 26 years. And... Uh, uh, as I said, we've we've had our own our own disagreements over the years, but also it's great con constructive criticism as well. Tiger, thank you for your time today, Tiger, yeah, Mark, and thank you for being a tournament host, Aaron. Thank you for your time, and thanks, good sir. luck with the tournament this week as thanks, the sir. Charlie Civic exemption.